How health leaders are working to keep track of the coronavirus as it continues to spread across Kentucky. And the relief from the summer heat is back in some places. We'll take you to one water park to see how they've been preparing for the return of guests today. Heavy bands of rain are possible tonight and especially heading into your Tuesday. We'll talk about just how much rain to expect right now at 6. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. Good evening again. I'm Steve Hensley. More heavy rain is possible through tomorrow evening. That's why we are continuing our severe weather alert day. Chief Meteorologist Paige Noel joins us now with more on the flash flooding threat. Paige. Well, you wouldn't really believe we have a flash flooding threat right now. If you look at most places, starting to see some sunshine, which will help dry us out from the heavy rain we saw last night. More is expected tonight and as we head into your Tuesday. But it's actually been a pretty nice afternoon for the, for the majority of us. Looking on top of Buffalo Mountain, you're seeing lots of sunshine. Those clouds really starting to break up. Like I said, hopefully this will help us dry out heading into tomorrow. Won't see too many issues, but really the only place that's seen some heavy rain in right now is Pulaski County, which has already seen a lot of rain over the past 24 to 48 hours. So this is actually a loop of the past hour. So they've been dealing with the heavy rain for quite some time. So of course, this is an area we'll keep an eye on over the next really couple of minutes and hours as they are just seeing very heavy rain falling in that area. So make sure to watch for ponding water on the roadways. And of course, if you run into a flooded roadway to turn around, do not drown. There's no warnings on this. I think there's an advisory out right now for this storm. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that over the next really couple of hours. But that flash flood watch goes until 8 p.m. on your Tuesday. You can see some counties were actually added to this as well, mostly just for eastern Kentucky, west, and even over into parts of central and western Kentucky. So the heavy rain does continue for your Tuesday, but I promise sunshine returns here in the next few days. And that 4th of July weekend forecast looking pretty steamy. I'll have more details on that coming up in a little bit. All right, Paige, thank you. Well, the day many have waited for since Memorial Day weekend is here. Under Governor Bashir's guidance, pools can reopen today. And in Somerset, Summer Splash opened its doors five weeks past their normal opening day. WIMT's Emily Bennett is there. A little rain did not scare people away as several hundred people made their way here to Summer Splash for their opening day. For the last several weeks, staff here have been busy to prepare the park following all of the CDC guidelines. Staff are constantly wiping down surfaces and cleaning inner tubes. They have an infrared temperature camera that will go off if someone enters with a fever of 100.4 or higher and even have electronic counters to know how many people are in the park. For now, they are keeping capacity at 1,050 people. There was a, quite a bit of cost up front to get us up and running and actually to meet all the guidelines. And some of those we actually felt the mayor, the low, uh, mayor Keck, actually felt that it was important for us to do that so we can kind of keep track and help with uh, uh, keeping the COVID from spreading and anything like that in this area. Now they are doing something special for those with season passes. They're opening an hour early just for them so they do not have to worry about not being able to get in. In Somerset, Emily Bennett, WIMT Mountain News. And coming up at 11, Emily will have reaction from many excited kids about being able to spend the day in the water. Well, 117 more Kentuckians have tested positive for COVID-19. At least 15,347 people have been infected since the start of the pandemic. Governor Bashir also confirmed the deaths of two more people since yesterday. Kentucky's death toll is now at 560, but nearly 4,000 have now recovered. Just last week, we brought you a story from the Veterans Center in Hazard where an employee tested positive for COVID-19. Shortly after that, we learned another employee had tested positive, prompting all veterans and staff to get tested. The results are in for all veterans and officials are just waiting on one lab result from a staff member and it looks to be good news. All of our veterans, uh, the test came back negative, so we're so very pleased that none of our veterans have been uh, infected. Mm -hmm. So uh, the other good news is out of the two positives, there was one situation that warranted a retest, and we actually did two follow-up tests to that one, the second individual that got infected, and they both came back negative. 
Antibody testing was also done on that second employee who did test positive initially, and those results also came back negative. The initial employee who tested positive has not yet returned to work. In Knox County, the search continues for two escaped inmates. Authorities say Cody Abner and Tommy Witt escaped Saturday night. They are both from the area. Abner was facing a drug trafficking charge. Witt is accused of assaulting a police officer. These men are considered dangerous. Police are asking anyone with information to give them a call. Tensions have remained high in Louisville after a deadly shooting interrupted weekend protests. Police have arrested Stephen Lopez for murder and wanton endangerment. He's accused of shooting into a crowd gathered at Jefferson Square Park. It happened around 9 o'clock Saturday night. Protesters returned fire in self-defense, hitting Lopez in the leg. One victim, 27-year-old Tyler Girth, died at the scene. A banner honoring Breonna Taylor has been removed from Clark Memorial Bridge in Louisville. Lanes on the bridge were shut down for several hours today because of the protests, but have since reopened. At least 20 people were taken away in handcuffs, and at least two cars were towed. The banner the protesters hung had Breonna's face on it, and it said, quote, They tried to bury me. They didn't know I was a seed. Breonna Taylor, the revolution is now. All votes in Kentucky's primary election are now in and counted. County clerks, though, have until tomorrow to turn in their totals to the Kentucky Board of Elections. The state board will release statewide results sometime on Tuesday. Hopefully, we'll know by around lunchtime or so. Now, a few counties have released results today, and these are partial numbers, as you can see on our website right now from the Associated Press. And on WYMT.com, the Democratic Senate race is extremely close right now. This has gone back and forth. Charles Booker is now behind Amy Grath again by just more than 1,000 votes. But again, this race can still go either way. This is just a small portion of the overall ballots cast. And by this time tomorrow, we should definitely know who will take on incumbent Republican Mitch McConnell in November. So stay tuned tomorrow as all those results come in. Uh, you can see the latest. We'll have our ticker up at the bottom of your screen again when they come in. We'll also have, of course, the latest on WYMT.com. With the 4th of July this weekend, many people will enjoy fireworks. WYMT's Madison Program has more on a local fireworks scare and how to keep safe this holiday weekend. Fireworks, what some would say is an essential part of the 4th of July holiday. After purchasing what I thought was safe fireworks for my son's age of 11, and like every kid, he was too excited to wait until the actual 4th. So I let him do a couple last night. Nikki Begley and her son were not expecting what would happen next. He lit it and ran back to what we thought was a safe distance. And instead of shooting up into the air and exploding, it exploded in the mortar coming directly toward us. A malfunction sending shock through them both. Thankfully, it did not hit us and, and we were good. <laughs> Although both okay, the Hazard Fire Department reminds us of safety tips to keep it that way. Never use fireworks indoors. Um, always have a bucket of water or working fire hose near in case you did have a fire caused by the firework. For Beckley and her son, they will be going back to the basics. We will definitely be more cautious and probably go back to um, sparklers and, and, you know, the little snakes that you light on the ground that don't explode. He will probably watch other people do it, but I guarantee he will not ask to light anything again. Staying safe and enjoying the beauty of fireworks from a distance. In Hazard, Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. The Hazard Fire Department also wants people to know not to relight a dud firework, wait 20 minutes and soak it with water. Now, Hazard will host a fireworks show, a professional fireworks show for the community as they implement social distancing on Saturday night. We'll be right back.